Hey everybody, today we have an Epson Power Light Home Cinema 8100. This particular projector I picked up on eBay. It uh, allegedly has a shutdown problem, it'll turn on, or the temp light flashes. Pardon me, um, something like that. I actually purchased this because I was going to use it as a parts unit for another Epson. But I figured, why don't I see if I can get this one fixed and then maybe the other Epson, which is also a 8100 like this one, maybe we can just trade them, you know, see which one's nicer, make one out of the two, I don't know. But that other 8100 isn't here yet, so we're going to just treat this as a standalone repair. So first things first, let's check the uh, lamp assembly and see if there's anything obvious to uh, open the lamp door we have to push inside there so let's get a little flathead that pops the uh, latch and then we can take the door off just want to see if anything obvious jumps out at us first you know if there's something like a, I don't know there's like a dead mouse inside or something take the lamp assembly out. I don't do a lot of Epsons on my channel because service info is very hard to come by and Epson does not sell parts. At least not to me. Uh, this looks to be an original. It has the markings here that make me think it's an original. But it has this kind of... I don't know what that's about on the back. They do have the KR85 marking. And the uh, bare lamp here says it's a UHE 200E, 200 watt, 80 volt, made in China, which is what they should say. So this might be an OEM. We'll pretend it is for now. But usually I expect to see that little, uh, that Epson sticker, you know, the little Epson original sticker. So this might be a high copy, but we're going to pretend it's real for now. Then if I look in here, I don't see anything that is concerning. There was no noises when I took it out of the box. Oh, by the way, the, the fellow that I purchased it from uh, packed it incredibly well. Uh, very well packed. I actually left a, a comment in his feedback about how good the packaging was, because not enough people always pay attention to that, in my opinion. Let's put that back on and let's plug it in and see what it does. Because my guess is it may have a, a jammed fan. That's kind of what I think might be going on if it's throwing a temperature error right off the bat. Let's see, we have standby. We do. Now let's see. Iris, good. I heard some fans. I do see Epson coming up on the screen. But it just shut down and the temp light came on. So you guys couldn't see it, but I did see Epson logo come up for a split second before it shut down. So that really makes me think that this might have a fan issue. So I'm going to cheat and just pull the power cord down because it really wasn't on that long. And let's start taking it apart. So this chassis is common across many Epsons. Let's zoom it out a little bit so you can see better. Uh, this chassis is used by the 8350, um, 8300, and a few others. I'll. Uh, I'll put something down in the description for all the chassis that this matches up with. And to take these apart, you have to take the sides off first. One, two, three. And then one, two. That'll release the sides. Oops. And I can overthrow screws or throw screws too far. There we go. 
are. And then let's take the, I think it's six, six or eight out of the bottom. We may have to remove the, the back screws, but I'm not sure yet. These guys, the ones uh, down here, we might have to take these out, but we'll see. None of those wanted to come out because this tip isn't that well magnetized. So let's see if that helps. Here we are. So there's seven in the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve screws, it seems like. Yeah, I think we got them all. I'll flip that back over. And then the side with the keyboard, we have to take this off. You might be able to see it better from this way. So since I've taken the screws off, I can just bring it out on the bottom, then roll it down, and we could either unplug it at the main board there or here, but I'm actually going to leave it uh, connected for now because I want to be able to try it. And on the other side, we can just do that and it just pops off. That well, looks like the old owner had a dog. Got some dog hair. I like dogs. I like dags. And then make sure there's no. I think there's a screw. No, nope, no screws there. That's good. And we do have to take out the two here. There are I think that'll do it. Move that out of the way. Let's slide this over and let's get you guys a better shot. All right. Yeah, there we go. So we have a secondary keyboard right here. It goes to that power button. I may unscrew that. In fact, you know what? <clears throat> for uh, for you, Cujo Van Ark, we're going to remove the keyboard. keyboard screws back in so we don't lose that uh, plastic bit. There we are. Yeah, that'll hold it. Alright, so let's set the front panel over there. And then this is the power keyboard. So let me plug that back in. Now, what I'm really hoping is that it's not a fan where we have to disconnect the LCDs. These cables are so brittle. I Every time I touch these, I cringe. It's just a little too much of a push. It'll break that flat flex. Ooh. But what I'm hoping is one of these guys, the more accessible fans, is the one that's our problem. With my luck, it'll probably be uh, you know, one of the ones in the bottom. But let's let's just give it a physical once over and then plug this for a moment. 
Let's give it a physical once over just to make sure there's nothing standing out. This is the uh, power supply. That's the ballast. That's all this stuff here. You can always tell the power supply because it'll have the uh, the huge this huge set of small diameter wires running over to the main board. That's your low voltage power. And with Epson, the ballasts and the power supplies are usually put in together. There's a fan here that feels fine. There's a fan here I can't see inside of. Let's pop. <clears throat> Let's pop this cover off and see. See if we can get to that fan. Come on. There's got to be a screw. Oh, there's a screw I'm missing. Whoops. There we are. So I can put this one back. Alright. This is the power supply fan. That feels good. We can get a better view of things here. That's the uh, lamp output. So this is power input to the main power supply, that connector, there's the mains fuse. This wire here, that's your output to the lamp, it's your ballast wire. And then we have the, uh, the blower fan. So that goes there, let's put that back in. And it looks like they're using it to kind of blow air on both, that's, that's clever. I will say Epson Engineering is always very clever. They do a lot with a little, and they kind of use what they have to do multiple things. Which may or may not be a good idea, I don't know yet. I'm not really a big fan of Epson personally, but I do see why people like them. I just prefer DLT myself. And I don't like how Epson doesn't offer service info. That is kind of a, a big downer for me. So now that that's back in, let's let's zoom you guys out, put it back up. All right, so I need to, oh, I gotta bypass the door switch. I wonder if my BenQ tool will work for that. Should be able to wedge it. Yep, that'll work. All right, plug this in. Have our standby light and we're just gonna see if I can physically see any fans not spinning before we get the meter out and start checking so we should hear the iris move that noise now the lamp should strike and the uh, fans should start that one's spinning it says Epson then it shuts down it goes right to that so there's got to be that fan spinning. So let's see, we have, okay, that fan's good. Looks like somebody may have been in there. This is all unwrapped, so I'll bet somebody looked at that. So we have this fan. Uh, that fan, this fan, I've got a few fans. All right, let's get the meter. All right, so let me, let's reset it because I have a theory. Um, I can feel air moving on most sides, so I have a feeling the external fans are okay. Um, we're going to check, like I can see that one spinning. I can feel air moving over here for this one. 
So what we'll do is we're going to check the tachometer output of each one of these and go around. So we have here to check, here, here, and here. Those are the ones that we should uh, we should find a problem with one of them. All right. Puts it in the standby. So let's go power it up. fans on. Okay, they're all on. That 0.23 left right. 0.28. All right, it shut down. Had a fan error or heat error, we should say. We got 0 0.27, 0 0.027. And what we got on this one? Ooh, look at that. 3.3. .3. Three point three. And then is it getting power? Yep, thirteen point three, thirteen point two, thirteen. So it looks like lamp fan is stuck. Ooh, got the scope set up. Let's see if the scope can see. Yeah, this thing's throwing a stall error, that uh, lamp fan right there. Let's move the meter. Should just get to pull the power cord. So it's this connector right here. temp sensor back here that fell loose. I wonder if somebody was in there. Kind of, maybe. I see a few things that suggest it. Disconnect the keyboards, set those out of the way. I want to see how we can get down in there without taking apart too much. I really, really, really don't want to disconnect the main board and the, uh, and those, uh, what do you call it, those cables. You know what, let's go to the lamp area right here. Let me pop the lamp out. I wonder if the if an old lamp exploded and threw some glass inside that blower fan. Because this, uh, where are we at here? This hole down here goes to the fan in question. And I can feel it now. All right, that's good. All right, so I put, plugged everything back in. I'm gonna leave the lamp assembly out because I want to see if that fan is spinning, especially since I pushed it. So we're gonna put my hand down here and see if I feel any air coming out. And let's see if I have something we can hold in front of that so that you guys can see it too piece of paper or something. Eh, maybe. Eh, maybe that'll flutter. We'll see. Let's lock this down. Power it up.
Nope. The fan is not spinning. Not spinning at all. I don't feel it. So that means we have uh, either a bad fan, maybe a bad wire. Yeah, it's not spinning. Alright, so we need to get that fan out. I need to get that out without touching that stuff if I can help it. So I'll unplug that, take that out. Let's take this fan out again. Set that over here. Unplug the temp sensor and then the uh, control to the ballast. See, there's uh, this. I notice this is just kind of flopping about inside. Get it out. This is a temperature sensor. It looks like somebody broke it taking it out because it is not in there very well. It's supposed to be kind of locked in there. So we might take this block out too and see if we can fix it. But let's unplug the fan in question. Looks like I am going to have to take the main board out, which scares me. But we're going to be really careful. Take these screws out. Honestly, even if I hose this thing and break one of those, the parts I need for the other projector that this was supposed to be a donor unit for is stuff in the front end of the optics, none of that, so. But I'd rather not break it if I can help it. Just I've had such poor luck with LCDs. Maybe I'm just not meant to work on them. Right, those are good. Then to take these off, we push up on those. And I'm gonna get tweezers ever so gently. Pop these out. Alright, I think that'll do it. Now screws. These stay, this one goes three, and let's get that, set that there, and then this one hidden here. I'm going to leave those other wires in because they uh, should not be in the way. I'm going to go like that with the main board. Oh, right. right there, it's a big one, it's like a ground. Somebody was in this. This was not on top, it was underneath. I'll bet you the owner tried to fix it. All right. This is where we're headed. You know what? I had to disconnect all those. So this is where we're headed, this thing. Let's zoom you in. There's our door switch. Move that. Let's pop these out. It's weird, I've never seen one of those fans go bad like that. It's weird. I do have a 8350 donor chassis I can use, so I might do that. I'm just curious why this guy isn't working. Let me, uh, I had a power supply. Let me think I'll find that. All right, so I didn't have a power supply for checking the other one, but I do have this 
which as you can see is the same. They are both SF oops, SF 7020 H1224E. That one, obviously, I tested and marked okay. So the way these go in is you have this piece, which sits on the front, helps line it up with the uh, lamp assembly. So what I found when I took it apart is that you have to have this piece ready. So you kind of put them all in together at the same time. I didn't get lined up. Like that. There we are. And then we can put the cover back on. And then we can start putting screws back in. I do want to see maybe about trying that other fan. I just I don't have any pins small enough to plug into here. I have a power supply, but the connector's different, so they might do this at a different point. Or maybe I'll just pop the pins out. Let's pop these wires out and we'll try it that way. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do that. Stand by a second. Alright, so I pulled the uh positive and negative wires out of the connector and I've got it sitting on top of a 12 volt battery here. The battery's down to about 9 volts but it, it works. So if we go positive right to it, nothing happens, doesn't spin. Wow, that's, uh, that's crazy. Let's see if there's anything obvious for we go back to, you know, uh, hooking the new fan in. So I think, yep, that'll pull straight up. And then there's the board. Connectors there. Let's see, and that red goes to some things. Well, that's all right. I'll uh, let's get underneath here. Let's try. Like I know these are clipped. There's like barbs that are probably grabbing it, but whatever. It didn't spin. I'll try it one more time. Maybe I shifted something. So it's dead. No good. No good at all. There we go. Now I won't get it mixed up. So let's get back to um, putting the projector back together. Okay, the um, to get into here I do have to take this black plastic assembly out of the way to get to some of the screws because we need to reinstall the temperature sensor, see if I can put that all back together. So this just lifts up and out of the way. I'm just gonna slide it over here because I need to get to this screw, that screw, and there's a screw down here. about disconnecting the uh, lamp connector. I think we should be okay now. I think this should come out. So that side's good. There's something else. 
else holding it? Ah, uh, yep, there's one more screw. I thought that was just for the wires. This, I'm pretty sure, used to go here, right there. In fact, let me get my scrap projector and look at that power supply. Oh, that was a bust. The other one didn't have one. I had already scrapped that piece out of it. It looks like I used the ballast for something else. But this is where it goes. I just need to figure out a way to make it stay there because this piece broke in a few spots. There's supposed to be uh, a little more to it, I believe. Maybe we can, we can just use a tiny bit of super glue because once it's in, it's not going to move. Nothing's going to pull on it. Maybe I'll, let's try it. so the wires go in the right place. And it feels like if I had something in here and that gap pushing, that would also help hold it. But I think, yeah, all right, I like that. The uh, super glue seems to have done the trick. So now let's get the power supply ready to reinstall. Run that wire back underneath. That's the control for the ballast. these screws back in. Actually, I'm going to put this one in first. That'll help keep it lined up. And this one second. Hard to do these. I'm gonna have to do these off camera because my head's gonna be right here. All right, those screws are back in. Now we can put the original part of the repair back in once I reseat the uh, wires. That's good. It's gonna go over there. And this is gonna go down here. Right. 
That's good. And then we have a few more screws to put in. that one and then ah. and then this one all right those are in let's put this fan back in So that hopefully we only have to install the main board and then we're good. Now this mm, that went here, but I kind of want to wait until we put. Nah, I guess I can just bend it. I was going to wait until I put the main board in, but that's thin, very flexible metal, so we can just do that and we'll bend it down. Let's just get these wires out of the way. Let's get our door switch back in place those are out of the way let's get that one out of the way just want to make sure all the wires are pushed back so that we can set the main board in as easily as possible because again I'm scared to death of what's going to happen with these little guys even that wobbling there makes me nervous. Oof. <laughs> They're probably okay, but oh boy, it makes me nervous. Plugging them back in is no fun. Just make sure your latches are very loose. And the other thing I don't do is I don't latch them until they're all in. That way if one pulls, it doesn't pull on the other. That one, I didn't like that one. Oof, I didn't like that at all. Probably okay, but mm. all right. So they're all in. They should be okay. Let's get a, these wires in. I'll drop a few screws in, and then we're gonna try it. I just want to put enough, I'm going to put screws in up in the front here. Just to help protect those LCD cables from being overly flexed. voltage power all this stuff so let's see that one
this one. Those are down, then we have our a sensor, S-E-N-C-E-R, whatever that is. That side, lamp fan. Power fan. Thermistor that we glued on. Ballast control. screw that has the little tie to ground. So let's also put that in. There we are. So those are all in. We could try it without the lamp and then if the lamp, you know, if it was the, the fan circuit was good we would get a lamp failure not a fan failure but let's just go for broke and let's put the uh, lamp assembly in and let's just start it and let's have high hopes because that fan was a hundred percent bad there's no question so I think I think we're gonna be alright as long as nothing happened with the LCDs cables we should have a uh, we should have a happily functioning projector one more screw and put another one over here because I don't want this stuff hitting anything or shorting out so let's just do that yeah somebody was definitely in here the uh, bracket metal piece wasn't lined up over the holes. Alright, so that's good. Let's uh, make, set you guys up so you can see everything better. Alright. Oh, I need to put my little bypass tool in. Oops, sorry. Click and just gently wedge that in. Alright, power. Standby is good. Let's see what happens. So far, so good. Fan started, lamp lit. We still have a picture, and it's only getting brighter. Yeah, that's that fan. That's good. The picture's still getting brighter, and the iris just changed. Let's see menu hey there it is I don't know if I can focus it this close to the uh, window to the screen but either way I'm sure you guys can see that there's something up there and that's really good so let's turn it off and I'll let it cool down and then we'll put it back together the rest of the way all right fans are off let's unplug that I'm going to leave that plugged in. And let's take that out. I'm going to get some fresh tape. Is 
scissors. All right, those are down. Just like that. There we are. So those are all in. That's tight. That's tight. That goes down there. Put a piece of tape there. I don't think there was one, but. There we are. All right, that's good. So now, let's get the top and our keyboard. It's going to go that way. So let's pop that screw back out. Now remember, I left or put that screw in because if I didn't, when I flip the panel over, this plastic stuff can fall out, and I don't really want that to happen. Are. It lines up that way, and let's put these back in. Now, if this ends up being successful, as in I can get all of the screws back in, and none of those LCD panels fail between now and then. I, uh, I'm pretty proud of myself. I don't have a, a great history with Epson. don't have a terrible history, but it's one of the brands I, I kind of cringe at when people ask me for help because the, uh, the lack of service info available is just, it's really a problem. Uh, I'm hoping the recent right to repair changes in our government here in the States. So I hope that helps and makes it easier for people to repair things because if Epson is forced to provide service info, that'll help out a ton of folks, not just me. So I, I really hope they can do it. So screw wise, we have, let's see, have a few for the back. These three. Then there's two that'll go in once I put the top on, and then all the big screws that come up from underneath. All right, so we'll take that and then we'll just reconnect the keyboard. So there's a piece of plastic in the front. Let me show you. All right, right here. So oh, that one's brighter. So this stuff right here. If you go to set the top down and it doesn't quite set, just kind of reach in, wobble on that, and then it'll let it drop down. Now you know what? Let's. Uh, Let's flip that over. There we are. So you can invert that if you need to. Can I get to it through here? Ah, you probably got to get in there with a screwdriver. Let's see, will that... Yep. So I guess if you're ceiling mounted and you're confused on the brand, you can flip it over. Or if you're table mounted, do it that way. There we are. So let's put the sides on. Nope, you guys can't see. Let's put the sides on. So this side. And then this side. 
Let's just make sure our wire's tucked in there. Top goes on first, and then the bottom, like that. And I'm gonna set the uh, lamp door on too. Now let's... All right, wobbled it back and forth and it didn't make any noise, so there's nothing floating around. Let's check the filter. Actually doesn't look bad. Kind of like a car air filter. If you see light going through it and it's not obviously dirty, it's probably fine. All right, so let's put these two back panel screws in, and then I will put the bottom case screws in, all 12 of them. Alright. So like I say, with all plastic threads, you want to go backwards until you feel it drop. And then tighten it up. These screws are nice. You only get about four or five turns out of them before they're tight. In fact, let's see. There we are. One, two, three, and about four. If I counted that right. Two, three, four. So it's about four. Four turns. Let's see. Thread wise, these are helical threads. Yeah, it looks like there's about three and a half, four threads. So that makes sense. And I could do this with the drill. I'm very comfortable with that drill, but I don't need to. This actually worked out really well. So this one, yeah, that's the last one. time here and then bring it over to the other area and we'll set it up there and uh, I'll let it cook a bit but so far it really looks like that was the only problem maybe I can get a little bit better focus with it further from the wall shift that lens up in almost focused focused enough there's the menu let's see info 425 hours on this particular lamp so that's that's actually really low it's a shame that uh it's a shame that fan acted up. Oh well. Well, let's turn it off and I'm going to take it over to the other side, so I'll see you in a moment. Alright, and there's the picture. Let's 
Let's get it out of oh, wrong button. Let's get it out of sealing mode, which I assume is this one. Uh, setting. Oh, actually, you know what? I got a better idea. Let's let's just reset it. Oh come on! I'm trying to do this without looking at the buttons, and I keep bumping the enter button when I don't mean to. settings yes and this should give us a normal side up screen there we go all right I like it so let's get a video up and then I can test it and we'll go from there all right so I'm just gonna run this video on repeat if um, it should go fine from here yeah it's a great picture you know Epson not a huge fan of Epson, but I will say their pictures aren't bad. So I'm going to let this run for a couple of hours, and as long as it runs for about three or four hours, I'm going to call it good. Uh, when I got it, I suspected it was the fan, and sure enough, it ended up being that lamp blower fan. Just uh, doesn't spin. Wasn't locked up or anything. Just had a bad uh, motor controller, I guess. So if you have any questions about uh, your Epson HC. 8100, 8350, or any of the other models that I list down in the description there, please go ahead and stick it in the comments. Uh, if you don't subscribe, think about it. More importantly, thank you for watching.